the migrants that have been, the refugees that are being pushed out of Syria, Saudi Arabia is not accepting one. Why are we always the world's patsies that we have to go over there and fight their wars for them? They need to fight their wars. We need to defend American interests, but it's not in America's national security interest Thank you, to have another war in Iraq. We're going to turn to some domestic issues now. I want to bring in my colleague, Dana Bass. Can, I, uh, Jay, can you. I just make one point on this whole military sure. discussion? I called for boots on the ground many months ago in a coalition with our friends who share our interests. You know, you win a battle with the military, and when we go somewhere, we need to be mobile and lethal, we need to take care of business, and we need to come home. But we face also a bigger war, and, that, and you win the bigger war with a battle of ideas. You wonder why young people and educated people, rich people, schooled people, have tried to join ISIS. Western civilization, all of us, need to wake up to the fact that those murderers and rapists need to be called out, and in Western civilization, we need to make it clear that our faith in the Jewish and Christian principles force us to live a life bigger than ourselves, to Thank be you, centers Governor. in justice, so that we can battle the radicals, call them out for what they are, and make sure that all of our people feel fulfilled in living in Western civilization. Thank you, this Dana is Bass. a giant Jay, battle since, in the world since today. Since everyone has gotten to weigh in on this military issue, I'd like to be able to do the same. We have spent probably 12 minutes talking about the past. Let's talk about the future. We need the strongest military on the face of the planet, and everyone has to know it. And specifically what that need means is we need about 50 army brigades. We need about 36 marine battalions. We need somewhere between 300 and 350 naval ships. We need to upgrade every leg of the nuclear triad. We need Thank to you, reform the Department of Defense. Thank we you. need as well Thank to you. invest Thank in you, our Ms. military We're gonna technology. Turn We're going to turn to domestic issues and now with we Dana need to care for our veterans, so 307,000 of Bash. them aren't dying waiting for health care. Thank you. Dana Bash. Governor Bush, let's talk about an issue that's very important to Republican voters, and that's the Supreme Court. Uh, after Chief Justice John Roberts voted to uphold Obamacare twice, Senator Cruz criticized your brother for appointing John Roberts to the Supreme Court. Looking back on it, did your brother make a, mis a mistake? Well, I'm surprised Senator Cruz would say that since he was a strong supporter of John Roberts at the time. I, look, I, I will talk about what I will do as President of the United States as it relates to appointing Supreme Court justices. We need to make sure that we have justices that with a proven, experienced record of respect for upholding the Constitution. That is what we need. We can't have the history in recent past is appoint people that have no experience so that you can't get attacked. And that makes it harder for people to have confidence that they, they won't veer off on decisions. Is John Roberts one of those people? John Roberts has made some really good decisions, for sure. But he did not have a proven, extensive record that would, made, would, would have made clarity the important thing. And that's what we need to do. And I'm willing to fight for those nominees to make sure that they get passed. You can't do it the politically expedient way anymore. This is the, po the culture in Washington. You have to fight hard for these appointments. This is perhaps the most important thing that the next president will do. Do you like what you just heard, Senator Cruz? Well, Dan, I've known John Roberts for 20 years. He's an amazingly talented lawyer. But yes, it was a mistake when he was appointed to the Supreme Court. He's a good enough lawyer that he knows in these Obamacare cases, he changed the statute, he changed the law in order to force that failed law on millions of Americans for a political outcome. And, you know, we're frustrated as conservatives. We keep winning elections, and then we don't get the outcome we wanted. Let me focus on two moments in time. Number one, in 1990, in one room was David Souter, in another room was Edith Jones, the rock rib conservative on the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals. George Herbert Walker Bush appointed David Souter. And then in 2005, in one room was John Roberts, in another room was my former boss, Mike Ludig, the rock rib conservative on the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals, Thank you, Senator. George W. Bush appointed John Roberts. And let me give you the consequences of that. If instead the President Bush's had appointed Edith Jones and Mike Ludig, which is who I would have appointed, Obamacare would have been struck down three years ago, and the marriage laws of all 50 states would be on the books. These matter, and I've fought to defend the Constitution my whole life, and Governor I will Bush, as president as well. I want to let you respond. Well, first of all, he, as I said, he supported John Roberts. He supported him publicly. So you can rewrite history, I guess, Ted, but the simple fact is that you supported him because he had uh, all the criteria that you would, have, you would have thought would have made a great justice. And I think he is doing a good job. 
But the simple fact is, going forward, what we need to do is to have someone that has a long-standing set of uh, rulings that consistently makes it clear that he is focused exclusively on upholding the Constitution of the United States, that he, they won't try to use the bench as a means by which to, to legislate. And that's what we should do. Thank and you, I Governor. hope I'll be working with members of the United States Senate to fight hard for the passage of people that have that kind of qualification. Sen Senator Cruz, 30 seconds. It is true that after George W. Bush nominated John Roberts, oh. I supported his confirmation. That was a mistake, and I regret that. I wouldn't have nominated John Roberts, and indeed, Governor Bush pointed out why. It wasn't that the President Bushes wanted to appoint a liberal to the court. It's that it was the easier choice. Both David Souter and John Roberts, they didn't have a long paper trail. If you'd nominated Edith Jones or Mike Ludig, you would have had a bloody fight, and they weren't willing to spend political capital to put a strong judicial conservative on the court. I have spent my entire life, starting from clerking for Chief Justice William Rehnquist on the United States Supreme Court, one of the most principled jurists. We have an out-of-control court, and I give you my word, if I'm elected president, every single Supreme Court justice will faithfully follow the law and will not act like philosopher kings you, imposing Senator. their liberal policies on millions you, of Americans who need to be trusted to govern ourselves. Thank you, Senator. <laughs> Governor Huckabee, I want to bring you in very quickly, if you could. Will you have a litmus test when it comes to appointing Supreme Court nominees? You better believe I will, because I'm tired of liberals always having a litmus test and conservatives are supposed to pretend we don't. Well, let me tell you what mine would be. Number one, I'd ask, do you think that the unborn child is a human being or is it just a blob of tissue? I'd want to know the answer to that. I'd want to know, do you believe in the First Amendment? Do you believe that religious liberty is the fundamental liberty around which all the other freedoms of this country are based? And I'd want to know, do you really believe in the Second Amendment? Do you believe that we have an individual right to bear arms, to protect ourselves and our family, and to protect our country? And do you believe in the fifth and the 14th amendment. Do you believe that a person before they're deprived of life and liberty should in fact have due process and equal protection under the law? Because if you do, you're going to do more than defund Planned you, Parenthood. Governor. One final thing. I'd make darn sure that we absolutely believe the 10th amendment. Every governor on this stage would share this much with you. Every one of us. Our biggest fight wasn't always with the legislature or even with the Democrats. My gosh, half the time it was with the federal government who apparently never understood Thank that you. if it's not reserved in the Constitution, then the Tenth Amendment says it's left to the states, but somebody forgot Thank to you, send Governor. a memo to Washington. Thank you, Governor. Now, we're going to take a quick break. Coming up, one of the hottest questions that you have been asking us via social media, we will pose it to the candidates. That's coming up right after this. Welcome back to CNN's Republican presidential debate at the Reagan Library here in Simi Valley, California. Simi Valley, California. Many people on social media wanted us to ask about marijuana legalization. Senator Paul, Governor Christie recently said, quote, if you're getting high in Colorado today where marijuana has been legalized, enjoy it until January 2017 because I will enforce the federal laws against marijuana. Will you? I think one of the great problems and what the American people don't like about politics is hypocrisy. People who have one standard for others and not for, them, for themselves. There's at least one prominent example on the stage of someone who says they smoked pot in high school. And yet the people going to, to, to jail for this are poor people, often African Americans and often Hispanics. And yet the rich kids who use drugs aren't. I personally think that this is a crime for which the only victim is the individual. And I think that America has to take a different attitude. I'd like to see more rehabilitation and less incarceration. I'm a fan of the drug courts, which try to direct you back towards work and less time in jail. But the bottom line is the states, we say we like the Tenth Amendment until we start talking about this. And I think the federal government's gone too far. I think that the war on drugs has had a racial outcome and really has been something that's really damaged our inner cities. Not only do the drugs damage them, we damage them again by incarcerating them and then preventing them from getting employment over time. So I don't think that the federal government should override the states. I believe in the Tenth Amendment, and I really will say that the states are left to themselves. I want to give that... I want to give the person that you called a hypocrite uh, an opportunity to respond. Do you want to identify that person? 
Well, I think if we left it open, we could see how many people smoked pot in high school. Is there somebody you were specifically thinking of? Well, you know, the thing is, You were talking that, about me. Yeah, I was talking That's about... That's what I thought, so, but well, I wanted let, let me, to say it. Well, I wanted to point. make let it me. easier for him, yeah. okay. and I just did. Governor Bush, please. So 40 years ago, I smoked marijuana, uh, and I admit it. I'm sure that other people might have done it and may not want to say it in front of 25 million people. My mom's not happy that I just did. <laughs> That's true. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. We have, we have a serious epidemic of drugs that goes way beyond marijuana. What goes on in Colorado, as far as I'm concerned, that should be a state decision. But if you look at the problem of drugs in this, in this society today, it's a serious problem. Rand, you know this because you're campaigning in New Hampshire, like all of us, and you see the epidemic of heroin, the overdoses of heroin that's taking place. People's families are, are being torn apart. It is appropriate for the government to play a consistent role to be able to provide more treatment, more prevention. We're the state that has the most drug courts. Across every circuit in, in, in Florida, there are drug courts to give people a second chance. That's the best way to do this. But let, let me respond. The thing is, is that in Florida, Governor Bush campaigned against medical marijuana. That means that a small child like Morgan Hintz that has 500 seizures a day is failing on nine traditional medications, is not allowed to use cannabis oil, and that if they attempt to do that in Florida, they will take the child away, they will put the parents in jail, and that's what that means. If you're against allowing people to use medical marijuana, you'll actually put them in jail. Right, and actually, under the current circumstances, kids who had privilege like you do don't go to jail, but the poor kids in our inner, inner cities go to jail. I don't think that's fair, and I think that we need to acknowledge it, and it is hypocritical to still want to put poor people in jail. I don't want yet, to put poor people in jail, Rand. Well, you vote, you, here's you, the deal. You, you oppose medical Here, marijuana? No, I did not oppose when the legislature passed the bill to deal with that very issue. That's the way to solve this problem. The medical marijuana on the ballot was opened up. It was a, there was a huge loophole. It was the first step towards getting to a Colorado place. And as a citizen of Florida, I voted no. But Let's, that means no. you'll put people Let's in jail. I want to go right now. I want to go right now. Jay, right Jay, now. May I Jay, you, brought me, you brought my issue up. That's it, true. It, go it, ahead, Christine, I mean, please. You know, I, I enjoyed the interplay. Thank you, gentlemen. I, I just say this. You know, first off, New Jersey is the first state in the nation that now says if you are a nonviolent, non-dealing drug user, that you don't go to jail for your first offense. You go to mandatory treatment. You see, as Jake, I'm pro-life. And I think you need to be pro-life for more than just the time in the womb. It gets a lot tougher when they get out of the womb. And when they're the 16-year-old drug addict on the floor of the county lockup, that life is just as precious as the life in the womb. And so that's why I'm for rehabilitation, why I think the war on drugs has been a failure. But I'll end with this. That doesn't mean we should be legalizing gateway drugs. And if Senator Paul thinks that the only victim is the person, look at the decrease in productivity, look at the way people get used and move on to other drugs when they use marijuana as a gateway drug. It's not them that they're the only victims. Their families are the victims, too. Their children are the victims, too. And their employers are the victims also. And that's why I'll enforce the federal law, while you can still put an emphasis on rehabilitation, now, which you've done in New Jersey. Yeah, you may respond, and then I'll bring in you, Ms. Fiorina. Understand what they're saying. If they're going to say we are going to enforce the federal law against what the state law is, they aren't really believing in the Tenth Amendment. Governor Christie would go into Colorado, and if you're breaking any federal law on marijuana, even though the state law allows it, he would put you in jail. If a young mother is trying to give her child cannabis oil for medical marijuana for seizure treatment, he would put her in jail if it violates federal law. I would let Colorado do what the Tenth Amendment says. This power, we were never intended to have crime dealing at the federal level. Crime was supposed to be left to the states. Colorado's made their decision, and I don't want the federal government interfering and putting moms in jail who are simply trying to get medicine for their kids. And, and Senator Paul knows that that's simply not the truth. In New Jersey, we have medical marijuana laws, which I've supported and implemented. This is not medical marijuana. This goes a much further step beyond. This is recreational use of marijuana. This is much different. And so while he'd like to use a sympathetic story to, to back up his point, it doesn't work. I'm not against medical marijuana. We do it in New Jersey. But I am against the recreational use of marijuana. If he wants to change the federal law, get Congress to pass the, uh, pass the law to change it and get a president to sign I, it. May I respond? Yes, yeah, Senator Paul. Here's the thing is he doesn't want to make it about medical marijuana, but what if New Jersey's medical marijuana contradicts the federal law? He's saying he will send the federal government in and he will enforce the federal law. 
That's not consistent with the Tenth Amendment. It's not consistent with states' rights, and it's 